a word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to be uh, in your house, God. We thank you, oh God, that our, that our homes, God, have become a new sanctuary, God. We thank you, Lord God, and, and we welcome you in, God, to our sanctuary. We welcome you into our homes, to our spaces of worship. God, even now, oh God, we ask, Lord God, that you would fill us up even more with your spirit. As we dive into your word, oh God, let your word transform our hearts, our minds, and our spirits, oh God, that it may cause us to move from our places of comfort and move to our places even to uh, of uncomfort, oh God, knowing, oh God, that it's your desire, oh God, to continue to draw us closer to you. So God, bless us now as we go into your word. We give you thanks and we claim all these things done in the precious name of Jesus the Christ. Thank God and said amen. Anybody ready for the word on today? Is that anybody ready for the word? All right, well, let's get into it. First Peter chapter two, and we're gonna look at verses one through three. Thank you, Brother Sam Dale. Uh, newly called to the ministry uh, for reading our scripture on today. First Peter two. 1 through 3, and it says, uh, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. This morning, saints of God, I want to speak from the subject of it's time to come off the feeding tube. It's time to come off the feeding tube. Saints of God, um, one of the most uncertain times of my life was when my firstborn child was born premature. About a month. And one of the consequences of his being born premature was that the doctors had to put him on a feeding tube because of his inability to feed on his own. You remember that first lady? Uh, I'm sure, uh, he, I'm not sure if he wanted, didn't know how to eat or he just didn't want to eat, but the doctors had uh, to take precautionary measures to make sure that our child was properly nourished. Um, how many know that it is extremely important that a newborn baby eats? <laughs> Because the moment that they are born is the moment that they begin to lose weight. They are born a certain uh, amount of pounds, but a day later, they may weigh a little less. So feeding is significant to counteract this weight loss. And when the baby does not eat, a feeding tube is the backup. How many know that feeding tubes are good for temporary use, but there can be some challenges that arise if they are used for too long, All right? People of God, some of y'all already know where I'm going with this. Some of us have been saved for some time now, born again, if you will. And just like a newborn baby uh, in our spiritual rebirth, it is extremely necessary that the new believer eats because of the risk of spiritual death. How many know that the moment we accept Christ is the moment that the enemy is looking to have us drop some spiritual pounds, huh? But some of us are not feeding on the word like we ought to, either because we don't know how to or 
We just don't want to. And some of us have been in the same, uh, upon the same spiritual feeding tube for the last 10 years. Let that sink in for some of us. What's a spiritual feeding tube, you ask? Well, instead of feeding yourself, it's where someone else dictates when you're going to eat. It's when, it's, 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 it's when uh, someone else dictates where you're going to eat and how much you going to eat. It's when you come to church uh, on Sunday, uh, uh, whenever you feel like it, and that's the only time that you eat. It's when the preacher puts food in your feeding tube because you have no desire to eat any other time. You don't eat on Wednesday Bible study. You don't eat at prayer or class meeting. You don't pick up the scriptures at home. You don't take a moment to talk to God in a prayer closet somewhere. Anybody got a prayer closet? You don't take time to grow your faith. All you have is a feeding tube. And whenever you get to the point of death, you crawl your way back to Sunday morning so that somebody can feed you just enough for you to make it another month. People of God, I said, it's time to get off the feeding tube. Where I hear some saints saying, well, oh, that's not me. I, I don't have a feeding tube. I, I read my Bible. Well, well, don't, don't get too excited because you still may have a nourishment problem. All CJ want to eat is junk food and anything of substance he don't want. <laughs> We like to take what we want from the preacher and spit out everything that we don't like. And therefore, others of us are spiritually malnourished. We don't want to forgive when the preacher say forgive. We don't want to suffer for Christ's sake. We don't want to shut our mouths when it's time to shut up. We don't want to submit to God or spiritual authority. We don't want to fast during Lent. We don't want to tithe first. We don't want to love instead of hate. So please don't be so quick to judge those who are on the feeding too. I said we got, we got uh, three reasons why we need to get off the feeding too. Can I share those reasons with you. Look at verse two of our text. It says, like newborn babies crave spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. You must crave spiritual milk. The only reason Peter is saying this in the first place is because there are some believers that don't crave spiritual milk. They don't want to eat. They never developed a taste for spiritual food. And therefore, uh, we're experiencing, they were experiencing growth issues. The first reason why it's time to come off the feeding tube is because of tube dependence. First reason why it's time to come off the feeding tube is because of tube dependence. Saints, tube dependence is defined by the child's inability 
or active refusal to start any oral activity and the skills needed to want to touch or hold food, lick, bite, and taste food. This condition can lead to co-dependence between the child and the parent. And the child gets used to the feeding tube. And, and, and most of the child, uh, children in this condition never learn how to eat. And a vicious cycle can begin and leaves the parent and the child in getting stuck in this endless tube feeding situation. How many times do you see people get saved but never grow? Oh my God. They don't develop the skills to grow. How many times do you see codependence between pastor and parishioner? The congregants stay in a childlike state because they're depending on the pastor to feed them and the preacher uh, uh, to love them. And because the pastor loves to be needed and loves to be wanted. So whenever the call goes out, they go running to meet the need. Or the pastor just gets burnt out and leaves them in this childlike codependent state. Anybody know that codependency can be a recipe for disaster? Okay. Maybe you know. Anybody seen a grown man still codependent on his mama? Huh? All right. But trying to still be in a relationship, but trying to be in a relationship with a woman. Huh? I tell you, you want to drive a woman crazy? Keep running back to your mama every time you get in trouble. You want to drive a woman crazy? Keep running back to mama to bail you out. Keep asking your mama to pay for it. Keep asking your mama and telling her everything that's going on in your life. Keep asking your mama to pray for you rather than your woman to pray for you. It's time to get off the feeding tube. Some women said, get off your mama's breast. It's time to grow up. The Bible says that pure spiritual milk meaning uncontaminated milk, the, 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 the pure and true word of God, pure spiritual milk will grow you up in your salvation. That means that your salvation is not mature just because you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's a place of spiritual maturity that God would have us to be. People of God, it's time to get off the feeding tube. It's time that you begin to build a taste for spiritual nourishment, a taste for holiness, a taste for sanctification, a taste for righteous living. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. They are the ones that are going to be filled. Those are the ones who will be properly Nourish the text says you must crave it. You must crave it like a newborn baby. It's the only thing that's going to have you, what the Bible says, grow up in your salvation. Look at verse one. Therefore, rid yourselves of malice in all deceit, hypocrisy envy and slander of every kind. This is the food that we're used to. 
This is the food that we want, huh? Before we accept Christ, even while we, even while we, after we accepted Christ, hello? This is the kind of food that we used to, used to eating. And because we don't develop a craving for spiritual milk, we take the food from the feeding tube on Sunday and the rest of the time, we keep doing what we've always done. We keep lying, being jealous, envious, just messy. Just, I mean, <laughs> and about what the Bible say, slander of every kind. We just just messy, malice, mean. <laughs> but we think that that's normal. But how many know that 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 the this way of eating can destroy your life? Oh, I just need just one witness. <laughs> You eat this type of food, it'll kill you. Second reason why it's time to come off the feeding tube is because of the, because of the side effects. Second reason why we need to come off the tube because of the side effects. People of God, temporary feeding tubes are okay. But there are some long-term effects if we use them too long. San, uh, Stanford Healthcare says long-term use of feeding tombs can cause constipation, uh, dehydration, diarrhea, and skin issues around the site of the tube, and a skin infection, and an infection in the abdomen, and problems with the feeding tube, such as blockages, when we begin to think that a feeding tube life is normal and neglect to make plans to wean ourselves off the tube, problems start to pop off in our lives. We begin to develop side effects. I said, when we begin to think that living a malnourished, spiritless, spiritual infant life is normal and neglect to make plans to live a healthy spirit field, a spiritually maturing adult life, we begin to separate ourselves from God. And if God is not in close proximity, then the things that were once together in our lives begin to break apart. And as a result of our two dependency, we can't associate the side effects to our lack of eating because we haven't learned the skills to eat in the first place. I said, because of the dependence on the two, you don't develop the mentality that says, I'm having the side effects because I'm not eating. Do you think that the side effects are just a random part of life? No, those side effects, those problems are happening for a reason. And that reason is you're not eating right. You're not eating pure spiritual. Let me say it like this. People, people are walking around spiritually. They get ready to deliver the food. Spiritually hungry. Spiritually starving. Uh, with side effects. Just feeling terrible inside. And have never associated the reason why you feel so bad it, with for, unforgiveness. Do you know that 
Forgiveness is the spiritual food that you need to eliminate those suicidal desires. Did, did, did you know that? Did you know the reason why things are going crazy in your life is because of your disobedience to God and or spiritual authority. Your decision to obey God and those he has placed in authority over you is the food that will satisfy your spirit and cause things to calm down in your life. I'm trying to help somebody this we can either swallow it or we can spit it out do you know that repentance is what your spirit is craving that the lack of acknowledging your sin before god and repenting of your sin especially during this lenten season is probably why you don't have no joy We can say that all this is happening in my life because it's just life. Some stuff may be life, but everything is not just life. Unrepentant sin, unresolved anger, and willful disobedience will cause all kinds of stuff to start popping off in your life. I ain't got no amen, but I got to preach what God has given me. Somebody's amen. ready to spit it out. Somebody's ready to spit up. Don't spit up just yet. Don't, don't spit up. <laughs> Just, yes, somebody needs to begin to associate your side effects with your eating habits. Somebody needs to link your problems with your spiritual life or the lack thereof. So it's time to get off the feeding tube so that your side effects won't take you out. Is there anybody on the line? I just need one or two that understand that side effects will kill you. Can, is there anybody who's ever experienced some stuff in your life and understand that side effects will take you? If you don't deal with those things, you say, I'm done. You say, I'm over it. I, 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 I'm done with it all. Side effects will kill you. But I'm saying, people of God, those who are understanding, those who are listening, oh, don't kill yourself because of the side effects. Don't let go because of the side It's just depression is a side effect. It is not the root of your issue. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Depression is just, don't kill yourself. But I need you to understand that unresolved anger is the root. If this is what you're asking of God, then you need to ask God. God, reveal unto me that area in my life that is causing this depression, that is causing this heartache, that's calling things in my life to go crazy. God, reveal unto me who, where, and what it is. So I can uproot that God. Mm, mm, mm. God, whoever it is, whatever it is, God, reveal to me so that the side effects won't take uh anybody hearing what i'm saying so that you don't abort your promise oh my god yeah i need you to understand that the enemy is wants you to abort the promise that's been stewing in your belly i need somebody to understand that the enemy is looking for the side effect to take you out but i want you to know I want you to deal with the root of that thing so that you can be a, a reach your fullest potential in God. I need somebody to hear me. Don't let the side effects take you out. Deal with the root of that thing. Huh, you walk in the promise that God has for you. Somebody look at verse three. It says, now that you have tasted the Lord, 
that the Lord is good. Paul said, there was something that brought you to salvation. There was something that made you say yes to God. There was something that you tasted that said, mm, the Lord is good. <laughs> something, uh, whatever it was, however God, there was something that brought you to salvation. You tasted something. And the only reason why Jesus is your personal savior is because you tasted and he was good. You might know the verse that said, taste and see. I wish I had some Bible reading on blind. Taste and anybody know that the Lord is good? I just need a witness. Come on now. Anybody tasted <laughs> and saw that the Lord But here's the problem, though. We like that. But we want Jesus to be our Savior. But we have a little trouble with him being our Lord. Right? Uh, Jesus needs to be both our Savior. Y'all you know he's Savior to some folks and not Lord to them. To them. Y'all you know that, right? Some people have accepted him as this. Yeah, I, I, I. It's good, God, that you saved me from my sin. You saved me from the pit of hell. Ha! You put me back in right relationship with our heaven. Thank you, God, that you are my savior. But when the Lord says, it's time to put away some childish ways. Oh, hold up. <laughs> it's time to put away some envious some selfish. It's time to, to love those who hate you. You want to do what now? We don't have well, much of a joy for that one. Y'all, the church has enough spiritual infants, both in the pews and in the pulpit. Church got enough spiritual babies. <sighs> Said it's time to get off the feeding tube because of tube, tube dependence. It's time to come off the feeding tube because of the side effects. Third reason why it's time to come off the feeding tube is because of the need to feed others. Because of the need. Y'all, the Bible says that the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. I believe that part of the reason is not because we don't have enough people in the church. God said, I can use one or two, two or three, call by my name. Let's, let's make it happen. I believe that the part of the reason is that we don't have enough grown, spiritually grown folks in the church who care enough about reaping the harvest of lost souls for Jesus Christ. Woo! That's why the workers are few. We got, we got people who are like babies and say, everything is about me. Feed me. Ain't that what babies do? Feed me, change me, hold me, huh? <laughs> it's all about me, and, and if it ain't about me, I'm throwing a hissy fit. I'm throwing a temper tantrum. If you don't give me the bottle right now, I'm going to call some hell up in. If you don't do what I want you to, I'm going to call some... Mm, temper tantrums all over the church. Will somebody please tell your neighbor, please grow up in your salvation. Please tell your virtual neighbor, grow up in your salvation. Please. 
people of God, God wants to bring you to a place of spiritual maturity so that he can use you as an instrument of righteousness. <laughs> an instrument of righteousness, one who has died to the power of sin and death is growing in holiness and putting away the childish ways and one whom God has deemed worthy to use whose life is worthy to use for the kingdom. The more we drink spiritual pure milk, the more God can use us. I want to know, is there anybody that want to be used of God? Is there anybody that want God to use you? Anybody found that there's a blessing when God uses you, that he doesn't let you go hungry, that he doesn't let you go weak. There's a blessing. He's not going to allow his child to be his representative and walk around looking crazy. There's a blessing. It's an honor and it's a, a privilege to be used of God for his kingdom. It's about time that we get off the feeding tube and feed ourselves and begin to feed others. Y'all, Caden started on the feeding tube. But because his parents uh, were dedicated to weaning him off. No, it's time to eat, son. Now, now we're not going to keep letting this feeding tube feed you. No. You need to go ahead and try this, and you need to eat. Huh? Because, huh? <laughs> because his parents uh, were dedicated to, to, to making sure that he gets off that tube and begins to feed himself. Y'all, Caden now eats more than anybody else in the house. I want five tacos. Five tacos? I want six hot dogs. Six hot dogs? What? You? What in the world? You eat more than me? I'm a grown man. You? <sighs> Eating us at a house. Oh my God, y'all. Grocery shopping every. All right, I'm going I'm to move on. Uh, <laughs> Y'all, there's some people, there's some people that need you just like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Y'all, there's some people who need you just like that, who are concerned about their well-being, who don't want them to die, who's more concerned about making sure that they get the word down in them so that they begin, begin to feed themselves so that they won't have side effects so that they won't be saved and living beneath who God called them to be y'all there's some people who need you just like that class leaders your class members need you just like that. I know you thought that I appointed you no I need you to understand that you've been placed there by God I, I need you We've been talking about spiritual authority. All authority comes from God. And you being in that place of a class leader is who God has decided to put in place so that the people in your class can gain spiritual support from you. Minister, church leader, teacher, mama, Daddy, business owner, all authority comes from God. Somebody needs to understand where God has placed you and, and understand who God has, has put under your authority. <laughs> because if we don't do what God's requiring us, y'all, the blood is on our hands. Do y'all understand that the blood is on our hands? Y'all, it's time to get off the feeding tube. It's time to come off the feeding tube of dependency. 
this Lenten season, somebody needs to empty out one of your closets and to just go in there and start praying. Praying over your home, praying over your children, your grandchildren. Somebody needs to go in there and just lay on your face mm -hmm. and begin to, you don't need nobody else to begin to pray. Somebody during this Lenten season needs to go to the scriptures and begin to study whatever it is that you're going to. What does the scripture say? How do I find victory in my situation? Somebody needs to begin to talk to God. It's time to get off the feeding tube and eliminate those side effects. Y'all, I don't know who it is, but it's time to, for depression to go. It's time for depression, anxiety, and fear to go. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love. He's giving you power and he's giving you a sound mind. time to get off the feeding too because somebody needs you somebody in your family somebody who ain't never seen a church house somebody who ain't never heard a preacher preach saints of God some child whoo, who don't know how they're gonna make it another day some child needs you on Today, somebody needs you. Ooh, I know you wasn't planning on having this child. <laughs> I know you wasn't planning on it. But God, but you in it now. You in it right now. Any, 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 any first time parents had an accident child, accident baby. And you weren't really trying to plan on having nothing right then and you looked at that baby and you said I don't know how in the world I'm gonna make it through this is there any parents that made it through any parents that made it through or making it through by the grace <laughs> of God hold on y'all to God's unchanged yeah I know it's 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 a lot to care for somebody else but with the grace of God he'll give you everything that you need to get whoever he has called you to, to the place that he wants them to be. Anybody believe that on today? Amen, 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 amen. It's time to get off the feeding tube, y'all. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity. Once again, to hear your word, Lord God. Father, we pray that your word that was spoken on today, God, will grow down, oh God, will be a seed, Lord Jesus, that will be planted and blossom, God. Use us, oh God to water those seeds, Lord Jesus, for one another, Lord God, so that we may grow to be what you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. If there is one here on today who's never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we've talked about depression and anxiety and fear, but we need to understand that Jesus Christ is the only source that can limit the, eliminate those things in our lives. And if we have never accepted him as our Lord and Savior, we cannot find a space to rid ourselves of those issues in our lives. I know you may be seeing a therapist, but I need you to know that Jesus, his, his principles, huh, is, the, is, is, the, is what the therapist is using. I need somebody to hear me on today. Jesus Christ is the source. And if you've never received him in your life, I invite you to receive him now. Repeat these words. Say, Jesus, I am a sinner in need of a savior. I acknowledge my sin. And I need you, God, to help me rid myself of my sin. I believe that you died on the cross. And you took my sins and you threw them away. I believe that you rose on the third day with our power in your hands. I believe that you are the son of God. Now come into my life. Save me. Be both my Lord 
and my Savior. Holy Spirit, come into me now and direct my life. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. If that was your first time saying that prayer, we thank God for your salvation. You are saved, and we want to connect with you. We want to disciple you further into the ways of understanding what salvation is and how do I grow up in my salvation. So if you got saved today, we ask that you put your name in the chat if you're on Zoom. We put, ask you, you put your name in the chat if you're on Facebook. And another, another question, if you want to join a church, if you've never joined a church, you never joined a body of believers who will cover you and to disciple you further in the ways of Christ, St. Matthew is great ground. And if you want to make St. Matthew your home, let us know. Put your name in the chat and we'll connect with you. God bless you and God keep you. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give God the praise for that word. Get off the feet and two. Merciful, merciful Lord. Amen. Did anybody get a word that they needed this morning? Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor, for giving of yourself sacrificially. Amen. So that the Lord could use you this morning. Amen. We're going to move further in our worship through giving. Amen. Our tithes and our offerings. And there is three ways that you can give here at St. Matthew Amy Zion Church. The first it's through Givelify. You can download the app on your smartphone, find Givelify, and find St. Matthew KC. You'll see a picture of our pastor, and you'll be able to give that way. The second way is you can go to our website, which is stmatthewkc.org, and you can give online, or you can drop it off at the church at St. Matthew Amy Zion Church, 4400 East Linwood Boulevard, Kansas City, Missouri, 64128. Let's pray over these gifts. God, we thank you so much for the gifts. We thank you for the giver. We know that you are our source and you use everything here on earth as a resource to us. So we pray that every gift that is given this morning will be used to advance your kingdom here on earth. Help us not to squander it, oh God, but that we will be good stewards over it and everything else that you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. We're gonna have a few announcements. Don't forget, we are in Lent. We're, we're in Lent and we... Um, do uh, fast every Wednesday from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. every Wednesday. So please make sure that you're following that with our uh, fasting. Also, we have prayer and Bible study. Prayer is at 5.30 p.m. every Wednesday. And then starting at 6 o'clock, we have um, Bible study. So we're just so grateful to God that we have these opportunities, as well as class meeting schedule. Make sure that you um, check out the class meeting schedule um and make sure that you uh join us for our class meeting all right if there's not any other um announcements i will take over or i'll send us over to our package there is one other announcement reverend skinner our prayer focus for this week as we've had one every week during this lenten season is um spiritual maturity it is being taken our focal scriptures uh, coming from first colossians chapter 1 verses 9 through 12 uh, please use this as one of your devotionals or meditative scriptures over the week as we begin to pray about growing up in the spirit being spiritually mature we've already talked about that feeding tube that can be helpful and detrimental if we stay there too long so let us focus on that as we grow together as a community of faith. Also immediately following service is a leaders meeting. So if the leaders would please stay in place, greatly appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Reverend Anderson. Thank you, uh, Reverend Skinner for leading our worship today. And again, to all the worship participants, we are so grateful that you participated uh, and helped make worship um, even a greater experience for those who all attended. I do want to say I'm good to see First Lady back. We ain't seen her face in a while. We thank God that she's doing well. She's uh, still beautiful and God is uh, blessing her and healing her. Uh, so uh, we thank God for her. It's good to see her. Thank you, First Lady, for 
uh, uh, blessing us in song today. Uh, I said, all right, it's time to get back to get back to work now. No, <laughs> no. We bless God uh, for her. Um, again, there's a leaders meeting following service. So all leaders, please uh, um, attend. If you don't see your leader here, um, please call them. If you don't see leaders that are part of your committee, please call them, let them know, need to be here. All right, well, let us uh, bow our heads uh, for the final uh, benediction. Gracious God, thank you, Lord, once again for this opportunity to worship together. Thank you, Lord, for your word, God, and how, God, it trains us, God, and how it grows us up, God. It encourages us, God, but we thank you, oh God, that it convicts us as well, God. For your desire, God, is to draw us closer to you, oh God, and to use us in a greater way. So God, uh, allow us, Father God, to continue to carry out your last uh, command to your disciples, and that is to make disciples of all nations, to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and, the, and of the Holy Ghost, to teach these new believers your ways, God, and we're grateful to know that you will be with us until the end. All these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen.